This is a 3D printed mini 2x3x5 designed by Alex Mass and I find it interesting for two reasons. Firstly, it's purple, and the other reason actually relates to where you can get one of these for yourself. It's being sold at a major speed cube retailer, the Cubicle. People scrolling through the products just see the 2x3x5 alongside the regular mass produced puzzles as just another puzzle to consider purchasing. This puts the puzzle under a newfound spotlight since 3D printed puzzles are made completely differently from mass produced puzzles and may require extra care to be taken by the user. It's safe to say that the average buyer of such a major retailer may not necessarily be familiar with that. This puts extra pressure on the puzzle's designer to have a robust mechanism and high quality production value. This is different from a puzzle creator's personal online store, such as on Etsy, where potential buyers are most likely already familiar with 3D printed puzzles and have more precise expectations. That's not to say 3D printed puzzles have never been sold at major retailers. Two examples that come to mind are the LimCube Mini 4x4, which is SLA printed, and Lee's mods on HK Now Store, which are FDM printed extension mods of mass produced puzzles or original mechanisms. Looks like these are also available on the cubicle under the Calvin's Puzzle brand. I've never tried any of Lee's puzzles, but the Mini 4x4 is an excellent and very stable puzzle, and I've used it as a base for my Waterfall Cube Supreme. I hope they get back in stock at some point. So I'd like to review this Mini 2x3x5 with this context in mind, and see if I think it holds up, and additionally whether it's actually a good value for its price. Afterwards, I'll scramble and solve the 2x3x5. I've already solved it a few times and I've had a lot of fun with it. The 2x3x5 is printed on a Prusa Mini Plus with a Tukari enclosure using MatterHackers or Polymaker ABS. Some of the stickers are Oracal 6510 fluorescent vinyl, while the rest of the colors are Oracal 651 normal vinyl. I really like these colors, so I've ordered some Oracal 6510 to try out myself in the future. I've been using regular Oracal 651 for years now. All of the 2x3x5s sold by the cubicle are printed in black filament. Mine is a one-off purple version that I obtained directly from Alex. It was actually one of Alex's personal copies. The mechanism is fairly simple. You have two halves of a core that screw together, with all of the other pieces hooking into the core or into other parts. It's essentially a 3x3x2 mechanism with some extra splits at both ends to create the outer layers. It's not visible from here how the outer center is held in, but if you turn the puzzle differently you can see it slots in further back. You might notice that this stock here is quite thin, but it just looks like that in this cross section, and in reality it wraps around to the piece's other side, so it's actually a good amount of material. In addition, this part is printed such that the layer lines run along the stock, thus greatly reducing the chances of it breaking. The only screw in this entire puzzle is the one holding the two halves of the core together, meaning that only the 3x5 face turn is tensionable. Everything else depends on the puzzle's tolerances and clearances, which is a fairly common design for two-layered puzzles with cuboid geometry. Overall, the Mini 2x3x5 turns well. It's not designed to be a speed cube or anything of the sort, but it's stable and smooth. Mine may be a bit different from the ones on the cubicle, as to my understanding, the puzzle's tolerances are tuned for the black filament, so this purple copy turned out a little bit looser and rattles more. Alex sent me this clip of how a black-colored puzzle turns, which would be more akin to the ones in stock at the cubicle. The print quality is excellent, with the first and last layers being extremely smooth. The first layer is printed on a Prusa satin PEI sheet. The intermediate layer quality is also superb, with minimal artifacting and all the walls being very smooth as well. Aside from needing different tolerances for purple filament, I would say the printer used to make these puzzles is well dialed in. My only concern with regards to the Mini 2x3x5's longevity is how well the stickers will adhere to the 3D printed parts. Newer copies, meaning ordered after this video comes out, do have their stickered faces lightly sanded. But for older copies that were bought before this video came out, the stickered faces are not sanded or smoothened with acetone meaning the vinyl has to adhere to the part surfaces straight off the printer. For the top and bottom layers of the print, that's not an issue, since as I mentioned earlier, they are very smooth. These sides are what I would be concerned about, as they consist of layers stacked on top of each other. I've had issues in the past with stickers falling off of this type of face in the very long term, although initially they stick just fine. 
At the same time, I have other puzzles I sticker just like this without sanding, and not a single sticker has fallen off. This uncertainty is why I have sanded all of my more recent puzzles, as I want to be certain that at least with this Oracal material it'll stick. I've had issues with different sticker material brands delaminating even from smooth surfaces, but that's a separate concern. Now, does this mean that these 2x3x5s will start losing their stickers? Not necessarily. Like I said, print quality is excellent, and the better the quality is, the higher the chances are that the stickers will be just fine. But since this puzzle is made from ABS, if I were to make it myself, I would personally either sand the faces or at least just smoothen them with acetone to have peace of mind that the stickers will never come off. So is the Mini 2x3x5 worth the retail price? For a 3D printed puzzle of this quality, I think $40 is perfectly reasonable. That has to include the materials, the time spent assembling and stickering, and then the cubicles cut. Considering there's a million 5% off discount codes you can use, I think the 2x3x5 is very fairly priced for what goes into making it available in the store. But let's compare it to some mass-produced cuboids. The MFA 3x4x5 is $9 cheaper than the 2x3x5, while the Calvin's Puzzle 4x4x6 is $2 cheaper. Both of these cuboids designed by Tom van der Zanden are substantially more involved solves than this 2x3x5. So the 2x3x5 acts as more of a slot filler, since there's no mass-produced 2x3x5 available. And clearly there is interest in people's collections having that slot filled, since the first batch has already sold out. I'd also like to highlight quickly just how far 3D printed puzzles have come down in price this decade. Just look at the prices of the aforementioned cuboids in Tom's Shapeways shop. The advent of consumer-grade FDM printers has made custom puzzles so much more accessible. So, that's my review of Alex Mass's Mini 2x3x5, distributed through the cubicle. Now I'll scramble and solve it, right after this B-roll. Alright, so it's finally time to scramble the Mini 2x3x5. As with any cuboid, you typically would want to scramble it without changing the shape first so you can maximize the outer layers getting scrambled, and then you'll shapeshift it. So let's do that. Now that the outer layers are sufficiently scrambled, we can shapeshift this and scramble it exactly like a 3x3x2. Okay, I would consider the 2x3x5 sufficiently scrambled at this point. I'm going to solve it using a method that I've decided to use. You can honestly solve this any way you'd like. This is a relatively straightforward and simple puzzle, but it's got enough of a challenge to where if you decide to solve it using either this method or a different method, there are some unforeseen challenges you might actually deal with. So I'm going to be reducing it to a 3x3x2, but before I do that, I have to actually get this back into the cuboid shape so that I can turn these outer layers. So. That's the first step, just getting it back into the cuboid shape without necessarily fixing any of the colors.
Okay, cool. So now it is back into the cuboid shape, and I can start pairing these corners with the edges next to them. My goal is to basically have four complete pairs all on a single long face, because then I could trivially put them all on these layers and then solve the rest using just this outer layer. So I basically just do this intuitively. I turn stuff, I see what's solved, what isn't, and then I move pieces around. Okay, now all of them are on the same face. I didn't need to do algorithms for that, I could have probably just done it more intuitively, but I don't want this specific solve to take too long, so rather than fumbling about, I decided to just go ahead and do the algorithm. So now what we can do is bring these over to the other long face and bring them up. So now that all four of these are actually all paired up correctly, and then these are, well, none of them are paired correctly. but magic trick, when you make the next double turn, they will always all get solved, because think about it. There's actually two distinct types of corners and edges. So this is mechanically mirrored from this. So that means that, that while this is the same as this, this is only the same as this. And if you've already solved these four, then the only other piece from this could actually be here. And then this can also be only at a cross pattern right now. So that's cool that this will always come together. Okay, and now we have to see about these uh, edges. N currently none of them are paired, which I believe makes for an easier pair up. It's actually a bit more difficult if only two of them were to be wrong. You can see that it was trivial for us to actually get it into position like that. And there is a specific set of moves that you can do if only two of them are wrong. You basically want to set them up on the same layer and then whatever the color this is, you want to have the opposite color here. So this would work. You basically want to make sure that this doesn't get solved when you bring it here like that. And then once you've done that, you use the edge swap algorithm from the 3x3x2 to swap this and this. And then, when you make the final top layer turn, everything will already be paired up. Okay, cool, and now all I have to do is solve this like a 3x3x2 because I've reduced it as such. I'm no longer going to be making these outer layer turns. And there we are, the 2x3x5 is solved. I think it goes without saying that before trying to tackle this, you should really know how to solve a 3x3x2. And if you don't already, I highly recommend buying one. They've been mass produced for years now. And just give it a try. It's a really fun beginner type puzzle that uses some algorithms that you wouldn't necessarily need to solve a 3x3. And 3x3x2 algorithms are relatively universal you can actually solve a lot of different puzzles, at least part way, just by using those algorithms. They're just generic cuboid algorithms, but they're very applicable. So this pretty much just applies those algorithms and has some extra steps. Overall, I really enjoy this mini 2x3x5. It's a nice, fun puzzle that I can bring somewhere and solve quickly, because it doesn't take that long, but it gives just enough of a challenge to where it's not too easy, you know? So yeah, I like it. If you want one, the link to the cubicle listing will be in the description below. I was told that they will be back in stock very soon. If you're interested in unique 3D printed puzzles like this, make sure to like and subscribe. In any case, thank you all very much for watching, and have a great day.